Uh, I was in systems management and mainframes in my younger days, much younger days. Uh, and through uh, IBM research, I got connected to uh, network management in the space of the NSFNet backbone in the US back in the late 70s. And they were going to upgrade from a 56 KB lines to one and a half megabit lines, which was enormous at the time. Now, you know, everybody in his house has better connectivity. And that got me in touch with uh, people in the IETF, developing protocols for network management. Um, and I got involved in a working group called SNMP, uh, Simple Network Management Protocol. And I got very much involved, implemented uh, all the versions that I actually ever thought of, even those that were not published. Um, that way, I guess, I profiled myself in the IETF. And in 1998, I was uh, chosen to be an area director for the operations and management area. I did that for eight years. Uh, that was a, a very busy uh, period, so a lot of work there, trying to steer some 20 or so working groups uh, in the direction uh, that you know the whole IETF wanted to, to get consensus and get work done. Um, then I was a few years a uh, little bit less active, and now I have taken, since 2008, a position on the ISOC board. That's again, that's something uh, that people have to choose you for, and so that's why you see me here in this weekend. Well, there are probably many favorite moments, like uh, I worked many years on the SNMP protocol, as I just mentioned, and so by the time that became an internet standard, I believe that was somewhere in 2006 or so, I forget the exact time when it became a full standard, that was quite an achievement. But more important, um, lots of people in the industry that actually had to operate networks still thought that SNMP was not the right thing, certainly not for configuration management, and so we held a workshop uh, with the IAB, the Internet Architecture Board, and we invited many you know, protocol developers, people from universities, people from enterprises, people from uh, ISPs and operators. And that's where we actually defined you know, what to do next in terms of network management. And so that in the end resulted to the NetConf, Network Configuration Working Group, uh, that built a new data modeling language. Uh, that was actually the net mod, but so we had two working groups, one for the protocol, one for the, uh, for the data modeling language, Yang, which seems to be very successful, especially this meeting we learned that many, many other working groups are interested in using that language for data modeling. And the NetConf uh, protocol, uh, which is also out as a standard, proposed standard actually, um, and many implementations we have. We have done an interoperability event uh, last year, and we have like 10 or so implementations that interoperate with each other. So now we have to see how well that gets deployed, but I believe that's happening. So that's uh, another good moment there that we had. I would certainly not consider it sunny. I mean, we, we, it is sunny in the terms of that we get more and more internet users around the world, and that's growing like, like hell, if that's the nice word to use. Um, but that's good. But we also see that uh, we have lots of problems. People need to migrate from IPv4 to IPv6 so that everybody can get, indeed get an IP address, a globally accessible and routable IP address, because many of the service providers uh, are now giving you an address behind a NAT, a network address translation box. So that means there's no good end-to-end -end connectivity. And the end-to-end -end connectivity allows you for you know, permissiveless innovation. That means that if you and I want to do something new, we just develop it uh, on our own computers and we can talk to each other over the internet because there's no IP is the layer that actually trans transports LR packets and we can do whatever we want. And, and that is getting worse and worse because of the shortage of IP addresses, because the slowness of migration to IPv6. And so in that sense, I find it a little bit worrisome. I find it uh, maybe stormy even, so that was the cloudy side. I find it stormy even in the sense that there are so many um, security issues that need to be solved. How do you make sure that the uh, new and innocent users uh, can actually use the internet and trust that what they do is safe? It's a matter of education to these people. It's a matter of getting more security protocols and make them such that they are more easy to deploy and all that. And that's, that's not easy and it's just getting worse. And besides that, we see things like the NSA, the, the, the PRISM things, uh, which are really, really bad, I think. 
Yeah, so that's one fear uh, that I have. Another fear that I have, and I have also expressed that last year during the Global Internet in uh, Geneva, uh, that is the Internet, um, you know, whether you go to a, a news website or to, you know, no matter what, it is full of advertisements and, you know, well, trying to, to take people to gambling sites or, you know, all sorts of sites. Which I mean, some advertising is maybe okay, but it, it, it and it's flashing left and right. It becomes a disco, if you like. And maybe I'm getting too old. You know, I like to go to discos when I was younger, uh, and I don't do that that often anymore. But that that's really bad. I stopped watching um, the news programs many years ago because it was all advertisement and, and blah blah and short and repeating and what have you. And that's what's happening on the internet a lot too. So that sort of makes me, makes me feel uh, you know, bad, and it's just getting worse. That's my fear. So my greatest hope is that we can actually get convinced the world that we continue with open standards. So you may have heard about OpenStand, which uh, I would like people to you know, go to and uh, find out what exactly we mean. And that's open standards where everybody can participate to define the network that we want to use to communicate with everybody. And the open stand also means that, you know, our principles say we need to uh, adhere to the end-to-end -end, uh, principle, which means that, you know, you and I can do the things that we want to do. Two other people can do something different and we are not, you know, standing in each other's way. So clearly there is uh, a number of actions that we need to take. They're not easy actions. Uh, it has a lot to do in the, in the uh, policy, political world where we have, you know, there's competing standards organizations uh, that make it difficult, uh, you know, to get to that open standardization process to make uh, the whole process inclusive so everybody can participate. Um, it seems like there's a little bit of a turf war there that is really too bad and, and we need to find a way to break that war and to make peace and work together for these open standards and that would be great if we could do that. But it's a difficult action and it's not, I don't think it's necessarily at the technical level, it's much more at the policy level these days which is, I mean at the technical level we can solve lots of things but policy is more difficult. Well, let me add something about the IETF. This is where that we had last week here, where people develop the protocols and we should uh, you know, also have some fun. So I am known in the IETF as sometimes singing a song. So that's what we should do. And it would be great if the internet would go to the way where we could say, not a bella margarinita, moetje is horen. Not a bella margarinita, smoesjes da more. Luna, Luna, not a bella Monica. Luna, Luna, nella copite. That sounds like pleasure, doesn't it? And that's what we need. We need pleasure in developing our protocols and pleasure in using the internet, which means it should be unencumbered and open for everybody.